Oh my goodness! You found it! You found my gemstone! Romeo leapt to his hooves as he spotted the ruby in Apple Bloom's mouth. She placed it in his outstretched hooves. Yeah, here. You can have it back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He praised Apple Bloom, grabbed the gemstone in his mouth, and galloped over to Starlet immediately. The white mare looked overjoyed just to be in the stallion's presence. <laughs> Apple Bloom clearly heard her shout of joy even from this distance as he presented his gift to her. The pair crossed their necks against one another, embracing. Apple Bloom smiled at the two knowingly. There went two ponies who would definitely tell Twilight good things about her. Apple Bloom was just about to leave when a sound caught her attention. A weak, sobbing noise was coming from inside the house Ronio had been sitting in front of. Apple Bloom looked around to make sure no pony was watching and slipped inside without a second thought. The door clicked shut as Apple Bloom stepped into her new surroundings. This new place, unlike the party outside, was dimly lit and was very unkempt. Boxes of various sizes were stacked up around the walls. Sheets were draped over most of the furnishings, and the whole house lay still. Apple Bloom took a few more steps inside, straining to hear anything. Hello? She called out to the empty house. In the utter silence, Apple Bloom could clearly hear the weak whimpering coming from above. Spotting some stairs near the back wall, she made her way up to the next floor. As Apple Bloom peeked over the stairs, she found the upper floor held only one long hallway. At the end sat a single door. A shadow moved behind the threshold. Apple Bloom trotted down the hall, leaving small hoof prints in the dust on the floor. Grime covered picture frames and paintings were the only decor of the hallway as she reached the end. She wasn't scared, but her heart rate was rising, the spirit of discovery driving her forward. She knocked on the door, the shadow behind it suddenly freezing up at the sound. Excuse me, but are you okay in there? She listened and waited, and waited, and waited. No response from the other side. Apple Bloom knocked again, and was startled by the sudden yell that came from the other side. Go away! She recovered from her shock and faced the door again. No! I ain't leaving till you talk to me! I don't have anything to say to monsters like you. Leave me alone. You're all evil ponies for what you did. What you are! Aha! Uh -huh. I knew something was screwy around here! Apple Bloom announced this more to herself than the stranger behind the door. She beamed in triumph as all her snooping was validated. The thing behind the door had fallen deathly quiet, but judging by its shadow, it had pressed itself against the other side of the wood. You don't sound like any pony from outside. The voice sounded sniffly, but calmer than before. That's cause I ain't! Whoa! The door swung open, lightning fast, as a pair of grey hooves snatched Apple Bloom up. Before she could even comprehend what had happened, Apple Bloom was dragged inside the room, and the door shut behind her. The sudden and unexpected shift scared the little filly, and she opened her mouth to scream. She was swiftly silenced by the same hoof that had pulled her in. Through muffled protests, Apple Bloom beheld her captor. A grey mare with a deep red, almost maroon mane. Her eyes held a look of both surprise and worry, but were swollen and sagged. It made her look utterly exhausted. Though Apple Bloom had never met this pony before, she could not shake a sense of familiarity about her. The room they were in was a bedroom holding only a twin bed and a bench before a dresser, atop which was a vanity mirror. The mare leaned in close and looked Apple Bloom square in the eyes. The two sat there for what seemed like an eternity, 
before the grey pony broke the silence. What do you think you're doing here? The grey mare's eyes narrowed as she released Apple Bloom from her grip. Ah, uh, um, wait, what? The question threw Apple Bloom's train of thought off its track, leading her to babble an incoherent response. The grey mare clutched Apple Bloom by her shoulders. What are you doing here? She demanded, her voice growing stern and angry. I'm looking for answers about this town. I came here by following some pony out there in the woods. Who the heck even are you anyway? Let go of me! This caused the mare to release her grip. Shock, now the only emotion on her face. You followed some pony in the forest? The mare trailed off, a strange look on her face. She sat there in silence for a moment, her eyes scanning Apple Bloom up and down, then darting to the window and back. Apple Bloom watched her, trying to figure out why this pony seemed so familiar. The mare spoke again. Who exactly did you follow here? Describe them exactly. Some mare of Philly, I couldn't tell which. She had a gold blonde mane and tail, a grey coat like yours, but her eyes were all glowy. <gasps> so she's the one who led you here. The mare stood up and walked toward the window. She didn't speak further, simply staring outside. Apple Bloom wasn't sure how to react, and was still trying to nail down just who this pony was. She started thinking about the memories, recalling the past she'd already glimpsed. The mare spoke again to her, this time with a quiver in her voice. S so do you know who I am? The note of fear in her voice chimed in Apple Bloom's memory. It hit her. Her very first vision, back at the edge of the poison joke field. She recalled the two fillies and their conversation about the path that she herself had then followed. How one had wanted to explore it, while the other was afraid and had forced them both to turn back. Your name's Mitta, ain't it? <laughs> the mare crumpled at this, her legs quivering as her shoulders shrank forward. In one fluid motion, she collapsed to the floor in a torrent of sobs. This took Apple Bloom completely by surprise, and she ran forward to meet her side. Oh my gosh, please stop crying! I didn't mean to upset you! It's not fair! It's just not fair! What ain't fair? All of this! The same thing happening again and again and again! Over and over! It never ends! It never ends! <laughs> Apple Bloom had no idea what to do. Mita continued to lay there and cry, each sob making Apple Bloom's heart ache for her more and more. With no other options available, Apple Bloom did the only thing she could think of. She wrapped her forelegs around the other pony's neck and hugged her like she did whenever Applejack was sad over Ma and Pa and started crying. <gasps> Mita gasped, surprised at the sudden embrace. Apple Bloom felt her try to push her off, but she could not muster the strength. It was strange. Though Mita looked like any normal pony, to Apple Bloom, her coat and skin felt icy cold and oddly soft. There was no strength in her limbs either. Finally, Mita's sobs slowed to a weak whimper, and Apple Bloom released her. <laughs> Why? Why would you even come here? Why follow her? I don't know. I guess it was just curiosity, Apple Bloom admitted. Mita's eyes had finally dried, and she stared at Apple Bloom. She just sat there and stared, like she was trying to look into her very soul. What the hell happened to this place? Why are you locked up in here, and why did you start crying just then when I mentioned that... Oh, the pony with the glowing eyes. Apple Bloom never broke eye contact as she asked the questions. Mita remained quiet, 
a sliver of a tear dripping from her eye again. What is this place? When Mita finally spoke again, her voice was weak. Please, please don't make me tell you. It's too hard to tell. This whole ordeal is my burden just as much as those monsters outside. Please tell me! I want to know! No, you shouldn't. I can't. You don't gotta be alone in all this. I know others outside these woods. Whatever's wrong, I can bring them here and we can help you. No! Mita practically leapt onto the little filly, pressing her face against Applebloom's in utter terror. Whatever you do, don't lead any pony else here. They'll be lost to this town just as we are. Any pony who comes here is lost. Lost forever. She suddenly shrank back from her own warning, acting like she had just said something taboo. You shouldn't have come here, little filly. You're going to be lost in this town, too. Applebloom countered by getting right back in her face. Y'all keep saying stuff like monsters and curses and losing ponies to the town? What does it all mean? Why can't I have a simple explanation? Nita regarded the little filly and took a moment to think. To Applebloom, it looked like the very thought of explaining things hurt her. With a heavy sigh, Mita took a seat once more. <sighs> First, before I tell you what I can, you must tell me, why did she bring you here? Do you mean the other pony with the blonde mane? Yes. Why you? Why now? She knows bringing any pony here puts them at risk. So why? I don't know! I don't even know who she is! We never spoke to each other, so she didn't tell me nothing before I followed her. If this was some kind of trick question, she wasn't doing a good job figuring it out. Mita took another deep breath. <sighs> this whole problem started with her. On that horrible night. Who do you mean? And what night? She is... was... my best friend. And I mean this night, the night of the town's founding anniversary. Sunny Town has been here much longer than you could ever imagine. And it's all from the curse. My friend Twilight says they ain't no such thing as real curses. She's real smart about magical stuff too. Curses are most definitely real, child. Apple Bloom's belly scrunched. She was getting a bad feeling about this. Did... did... Did something bad happen here? Yes. Something bad. Something so very, very bad that the forest itself didn't like it. Mita stopped again and closed her eyes, her face drooping. Hold your horses! The forest didn't like it? The Everfree Forest exists as it does because it has its own special kind of magic. That's what keeps the weather wild and untamed here. That's what allows such strange creatures to live in it. Even when our town was founded near its edge so long ago, no pony could have possibly known how far the forest's magical influence stretched. The forest is a live child, and it moves. It absorbs anything that lives too close to its edges, makes it part of itself. Her voice dropped. Corrupts it. Whoa! Are you telling me this town wasn't originally in Everfree? That's exactly what I'm telling you. We weren't the only town either. We had a sister settlement about a few days trot to the north as well. Is that town still there too? Do they believe in curse marks? Curse marks. Yes. That's where the whole rumor started. The ponies of this town were scared. Something awful happened to that neighboring town. It all had to do with the cursed marks. But they ain't curses! They ain't even called curse marks! They're cutie marks! Cutie marks? Hmm. I've never heard them called that before, but I'd be inclined to believe it. Those marks seem no more a curse to me than that bow on your head is a curse. But you see, our town used to trade and interact quite a bit with our sister village, and then one day it all just stopped. No pony came or went from there anymore. We heard no news and got no messages from the ponies there. The villagers in Sunnytown started getting worried. 
The village elders are in charge here, and they set up a small group to investigate. But all the group found were... ruins. Ruins and corpses. The tree had come up from the ground and... destroyed everything so quickly. It was unnatural, or so we thought. We did not realize that for the Everfree, that was very natural indeed. The forest takes what it wants, and it wanted our sister town. The scouts met some travelers from another village in the road home, and asked if they had heard what happened. The villagers said they had visited the lost village a few weeks earlier and seen what was happening there with their own eyes. Mita halted her explanation, rubbing her eyes again with a hoof. <sighs> It started with some pony in town getting a mark on their flanks. They started performing amazing feats and skills related to the picture, now burned into their flesh. Then they got another, and another, and another, spreading all over their bodies. Each mark made them do crazier, more death-defying feats related to their new marks. The travelers called it pox. It caused great damage to the town and its residents. Worst of all, the marks started spreading to other ponies who lived there like a disease. Soon everyone was covered head to hoof in these terrible things. As the story goes, they worked and performed themselves all to death, completely destroying the town in the process, and the Everfree reached out and took what was left. Apple Bloom simply sat there, wide-eyed at the story. She remembered her own brush with Cutie Pox, and how, without Twilight Sparkle's expertise, she might have faced a similar fate to this lost sister town. Our village elders were horrified by that story, so they made sure everyone in town knew about the curse marks. They made every pony fear them greatly, made sure no pony would end up with a mark on them, so the pox plague could never spread amongst us and destroy our home the same way it did to our sister village. But what happened when some pony did get their cutie mark? Please, I... I can't. Mita dodged Apple Bloom's question, staring at the floor somberly. Because of what happened? Because of our digressions? Because of our stupidity and fear? We argued the magic of nature itself. The forest that had previously tolerated our presence came alive with rage and destructive forces. And her fate that night was the spark that set off the forest's real curse upon us, not the fake curses we feared. So then, what kind of curse do y'all have now? Apple Bloom was having trouble following all this at once. The question made Mita raise her head and open her eyes, this time pointing Apple Bloom toward the window as she got to her own hooves. Surely you can take some guesses, little one. You've been amongst the... others out there. The ones who brought this all on us. Can't you see the patterns? Mita waited as Applebloom looked outside. She saw all the party ponies eating and drinking and having fun. Starlet and Ronio were nuzzling near the well and she spotted Gladstone and Three-Leaf dancing near an old record player. As far as she could tell, nothing looked too out of the ordinary. I'm sorry, but what am I looking for exactly? Time. Time is non-existent in this town. This party has been going on for hours, right? Ponies have been eating and drinking all night, right? So why are the tables as still and full as they were when you arrived? The candles haven't even lost a drop of wax yet. You surely have talked with some of those ponies, haven't you? Well, yeah. And what did you think about them? Well, most of what they said felt kind of rehearsed. Like they were saying stuff they'd said so many times before they knew their lines by heart. Almost like they're empty inside? I guess. Yeah, kind of like that. That's because they are. Those ponies out there, they've all had their souls stolen, taken by the curse the Everfree Forest laid on us so many years ago. This party never ends for us because the curse has stolen the life of this town, 
stolen our time away and trapped us here in this endless cursed celebration. We are all cursed to everlasting limbo, reliving our last night again and again and again. Your hours pass by to us like seconds, whole years merely days, a never-ending torture of our own making. But how can everything in the town look so normal then? If y'all have been here for so long, shouldn't everything be crumbling and rotten? Mita froze up at Applebloom's question, her face scared. She bit her lower lip and turned her gaze toward the door. There's something else at work that keeps this town untouched by time, little one. An evil working in the darkness. I simply can't tell you. Mita seemed to be choking on her words near the end, almost as if trying to explain further would hurt her. Wait, but then, if you're cursed like the others, how do you have a memory? You don't seem hollow inside. Mita turned paler than she already was. Tears welled in her eyes. I... I... don't know. I don't know why I still have my memory. For some reason, the curse trapped me in here, but it didn't take my mind like it did the others. Maybe it's my own personal hell. My punishment for failing to protect her. Mita looked like she was about to start sobbing again, but Applebloom cut in. Please, can you tell me more? No, I can't. I simply can't. Please, for the sake of your friends and family, just leave. Mita stood and began to shoo Applebloom toward the door, tears falling from her eyes. Leave while you still can, before it's too late and the curse traps you here too. Hey! Wait a minute, I'm not done here, I still got more questions! Applebloom protested as she was pushed out into the hallway. No, little filly, no more questions. You don't want to know the truth lurking behind this town's facade. Just leave, run home, never look back and leave us to our own well-deserved fates. With that, Mita slammed the door in Applebloom's face. Applebloom could hear her slump against the door as her sobs began again. She angrily stomped a hoof on the floor in protest, sending a cloud of dust floating into the air. <coughs> Applebloom coughed and wheezed for air as she stepped out of the dust cloud. She stopped near an old photo frame, just as her nose began to tingle. In one massive sneeze, Apple Bloom blew every bit of dust clean off the frame. Sniffling and wiping her nose with her hoof, she looked up at the picture she had revealed. It was a photograph of two fillies, maybe only a few years older than Apple Bloom herself. Both were grey, but each had a different mane colour. One dark red, and one golden blonde. Applebloom immediately recognized the pair. It was Mita, and the other pony from the vision. They looked so happy in the picture, clearly they had to have been best friends like Mita had said. Applebloom stood on tippy hooves to try and get a better look at the photo. Without warning, the blonde mare's eyes suddenly lit up with light. Sending Apple Bloom falling to the floor. <sighs> Come quick! Something happened to Gladstone! The familiar grey pony with blonde mane galloped down the stairs, almost tripping in her haste as she skidded to a halt by the open door. Mita was standing there, motioning for her to look outside. Gladstone was being led away through the town square, in shackles. The grey mare looked like she wanted to run out and meet him, but Mita held her back. No! You can't interfere! What are they planning to do to him, though? What has he even done wrong? I don't know all the details, but some pony told me he was in the clinic after an accident and that the nurse went to dress his wounds, and then there was a loud scream. The blonde filly grabbed Mita by the shoulder, pointing her other hoof at Gladstone. Look at his flank! What is that? Mita looked, her expression morphing into one of horror. 
Oh no. Gladstone. He must have gotten cursed. The grey pony frowned, taking another good look at Gladstone before he was out of sight. I don't know. It looks too pretty to be called a curse, Mark. In fact, I think it looks kind of cute on him. What? You can't be serious. Who cares what it looks like? It's a curse. I'm just saying, I don't think I buy it. Why would something that looks so innocent be cursed? I'm going to go find out what's really going on here. No, you can't do that. If they catch you, I'm not going to stop them. Then that's your decision, but I'm still going regardless. I have to find out. With that, the mare shrugged off her friend and trotted out into the street. Many ponies littered the path, all trying to get a glimpse of what was going on. The blonde mare used this to her advantage and weaved back and forth through the crowd. A filly bumped into her, making her stumble. Hey, what were you going? No response, no apology. Her mind was focused on more important things. All around her, she heard the rising voices of townsponies as the procession pushed through town. They say it all happened at the old well last night. I heard it happened after he went to the clinic. What's wrong with that pony, Daddy? Don't look at him, sweetheart! He's cursed! If you get too close, you'll catch the curse too! The blonde mare snorted as she trotted by the last gossiper. She did not believe in any of these rumors or claims the village elders had told them. The crowd began to thin as Gladstone was led to the cabin nearest the edge of town. Captors and prisoner entered and locked the door, leaving her outside in the gloom of oncoming night. A moment of doubt passed through her as she contemplated spying on them. It was rude and might get her into trouble, but something in her gut pressed her on. There was something wrong about this whole situation. She snuck behind the house and climbed up onto an empty wooden crate to peer through the window. She saw many ponies standing inside the cabin. She tried to listen against the glass, but they spoke in hushed voices. Gladstone was chained near the fire, while six others stared at him in the shadows. They talked amongst themselves, then said something directly to Gladstone. He seemed distressed and confused, staring back at them in bewilderment. His nose ran with blood, as if he had been punched to subdue him while they chained him up. The blonde mare heard him shout groggily. I don't know how it happened. I was just doing some repairs on my roof when it disappeared. I didn't do anything wrong, I swear. I followed all the instructions he gave us to stay safe, but it still appeared. One of the ponies, a dark grey stallion with a black mane and tail, struck Gladstone across the face with his hoof. She strained to see what was happening, the small blaze in the fireplace, the only light source in the whole room. A drop of light rose from the fireplace, bouncing along in the air. She thought she saw metal in the dark stallion's mouth, deducing he was holding a fire poker. Gladstone wailed in pain as the hot poker pressed against his flank. The blonde mare gasped as smoke rose off the charred flesh of the poor pony's flanks. Gladstone buckled to the floor from the pain. The mare shrank away from the window, horrified at this gruesome display. Gladstone. It's for your own good. Do you want it to spread to your loved ones, your friends, your neighbors, your family? This is the only way to keep them from your curse mark. Her thoughts raced. What exactly had she stumbled into? She needed to warn ponies in town, needed to tell others what was going on. Her investigation and curiosity had led her to discover an awful secret, and... Ah! Ah! Suddenly, 
a flash of light shone bright behind her, startling her. Her whole flank seemed to tingle and go momentarily numb, sending her tumbling to the ground with a thud. Her skull struck the side of the crate on which she had been standing, and her head swam. Through blurred vision, she saw some pony leave the house and stand over her. He was hissing something at her with so much venom she barely recognized him. Cursed. 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 <sighs> Apple Bloom's head was spinning her vision slowly returning as she climbed to her hooves. As the little filly regained consciousness, she was surprised to find herself standing outside. Her head hurt, and there was a dry taste in her mouth. Had she been running? Up to now, she hadn't budged while having these memories. This time, though, she seemed to have travelled quite a bit while unconscious. Cautiously, she felt her chest and head with her front hoof, that last memory felt so vivid she could have sworn she had taken the blonde pony's place. She looked around at her new surroundings, familiarity taking hold of her as she realized where her recent recall had taken her. Some of the scenery had changed, but the general area looked all too familiar. In front of her sat a dirt path leading through a line of trees. The opening was shrouded in darkness. She looked back to the thicker parts of town. The party still raged behind her. Yet this part of the town she now stood in lay oddly still. Applebloom knew her chase was nearing its end. The little filly puffed out her chest, steeled her nerves, and stepped into the dark woods once more. The shadows of the trees engulfed Applebloom, as she followed the path into the undergrowth. The glow from the town's lanterns illuminated the exit she had taken, but the rest of the thicket was dark. Only sparse illumination from the moon above managed to pierce the canopy in places. Applebloom trotted forward carefully, trying not to lose the path in front of her. Soon the glow from the town had vanished in the distance, and the filly's whole world became shadows. Suddenly, a flicker of golden light zipped between some trees in the distance. Applebloom stopped dead, scanning the trees and listening. In the distance, she could just barely hear soft laughter. <laughs> Come on, Slowpoke. Golden light shot past Applebloom, flying deeper into the woods. The little filly galloped after it, swerving around trees and jumping over roots in her way. She kept seeing glimpses of her culprit, but couldn't seem to catch up. Keep going! You're almost there! It almost sounded like a taunt. This drove Applebloom to even greater speed. She rounded another line of trees, skidding to a halt as the path ended. In front of her sat a large cabin nestled between the trees. All signs of the golden light seemed to have vanished as Applebloom crept up to the house. It looked like it was abandoned, but as she approached, Applebloom detected a faint light within. The windows were shuttered. She tried the door. It was locked. How was she supposed to get inside? She wandered around the house and discovered a crumbled well. In its prime, it might have resembled the same one within the town. Applebloom saw some flecks of red on a particularly jagged stone on one side of the crumbled structure. Instinctively, she reached out and rubbed it with her hoof, a sense of familiarity washing over her. Applebloom's ears twitched as a loud clicking noise came from around the corner. Abandoning the well, Applebloom galloped back around to the front door. Her faint glow faded off the doorknob as the filly approached. An eerie creaking came from the hinges 
as she pushed the door open. Applebloom did not let that deter her. She marched boldly inside the house. Empty. The entire house was empty. The entire place was coated with layers upon layers of dust. The only remarkable thing to speak of was at the back of the room. A fireplace, fully lit and crackling. Applebloom sighed, coughing as she accidentally inhaled some dust. After all that, a dead end, really? She walked over to the fireplace and sat in front of it, thinking to herself as she warmed her body by the flames. She wondered who had lit them and whether they were still close by. Or maybe this was more of the strange time magic curse Mita had spoken of. Maybe this fire had been lit years ago, and the magic of the forest had never let it go out since then, though the house itself had been abandoned. Nothing. All this for nothing. I thought for sure that here was where I was going to find the answer of what happened. But ain't nothing in here but this fire. Applebloom sat upright as her eyes fell properly upon the fire. The logs inside looked like they had been sitting there for a long time, longer than they had any right to be. Underneath, wedged within the hearth, was something white. Applebloom leaned in closer, the heat of the flames making her brow sweat. There were a lot of little white things, slotting together in places to make up some kind of bigger shape. <gasps> Applebloom stared, realization slowly creeping over her. The whole fireplace was filled with bones. Her small heart quickened, the beat amplified by the stillness of the house, as she was lost to the darkness again. Her eyes slid open. An orange glow flickered to her right as she looked around. The soft grey of her coat was marred by the ugly brown rope that hogtied her. She tried to speak, but her voice was muffled by a rag tied around her mouth. Her vision went wild, searching for some kind of help as strands of her blonde mane fell into her eyes. Through her bangs, she could spot shadowed figures standing across the room. They were all looking at her. This can't be happening. First Gladstone, now this one. It's only a matter of time before the whole town ends up like these two. We need to find a way to stop these marks from spreading. Well, it seems that these marks can't simply be burned off to stop their capacity to infect others. Greywolf said this mare's mark appeared on her just moments ago. Through glass, no less. It's a curse, after all, not a disease. Maybe it sensed our intentions to destroy it, and jumped from Gladstone to her. If this curse can multiply, it could jeopardize the whole town! It could even infect one of us if we don't stop it soon! She saw them all shiver at this notion. The door opened. A pony walked in and over to a table. Panic-stricken, she wiggled her hooves again, trying desperately to free herself from the rope. Her mind raced with fear. Then it seems we don't have any more options, gentle coats. We'll have to stop it right here, right now. And how do you expect to do that, Greyhoof? We don't have any unicorns in our town to remove the magic. And if anything, this proves that trying to cover the mark on one pony to save them can make it jump to another nearby and damn them instead. We shall just have to try removing it by removing the source, then. She watched as the dark grey stallion who had branded Gladstone grabbed something from the table. Greyhoof, you don't honestly intend to- Can you think of a better way? Because I can't. And we're running out of time! We could lose the whole town to this. Think of that. All those mares, stallions, fillies, and colts. Lost 
to a curse that covers them in evil marks that make them nothing more than puppets on strings to whatever those pictures show. Every pony dying because the marks didn't show things like eating, drinking, or sleeping. She watched as the other ponies regarded their options, all nodding in unison. Make it quick. A flash of silver caught her eye as Greyhoof took a step closer. She tried to plead with the village elders around her, but could only manage a muffled scream. Tears streamed down her face as the knife in Greyhoof's mouth drew close. Her heart raced, panic gripping her. She closed her eyes, whimpering and unable to watch anymore. The cold slice across her throat was indeed quick, but the pain that followed was unimaginable and prolonged. She felt sticky liquid pouring out of her. She managed a gurgled scream, but it served no purpose. It was already too late. She could feel her lungs pulling in one last breath, trying in vain to hang on to the life they had taken from her. Please, ever free, forgive these dark acts that we have done. Hooves gripped her, lifted her, took her to the fireplace. She felt herself land among the flames, but luckily she was already too far gone to feel as they began to consume her fur and burn her flesh. All around them, the magic of the Everfree Forest pulsed in growing fury. No! No! Apple Bloom screamed and clambered to her hooves as the memory wrenched itself from her. Or was she wrenching herself free from it? Frantically, her forehooves went to her neck, expecting to find an open wound. Her breathing was laboured and deep, and her little heart raced faster than it ever had before. She tried to look away from the bones, from the gaping skull in the centre of it all, still caught in the blonde mare's last, desperate, useless scream. But her eyes refused to move. All Apple Bloom could see was the red of the fire, the burning lies, and the poor pony who had been murdered here. Her little game of detective had taken a hideous turn, and Apple Bloom wished desperately that she had listened to meet her and gone home instead of continuing in her quest for answers about this awful town. She ran, bursting out of the house and into the woods, galloping toward town. She had to tell some pony, any pony who would listen even a bit. She had to tell them that the village elders had caused this to happen to them, had cursed them that night when they angered the Everfree by trying to stamp out the wild, untamable magic of cutie marks. Apple Bloom slowed as she rounded the curve in the path that led to the town. The glow from the lanterns was extinguished, leaving only more darkness ahead. How did they manage to put out all those lights so quickly? It did not bode well. Apple Bloom hesitated. Before her was pitch black unknown, but behind her was a mausoleum and a dead end. She had nowhere else to go but back into town. The exit to her own path, back towards Zakora's house, was on the other side of the terrible place. The thick stench of blight overwhelmed Apple Bloom's senses as she passed through the trees into Sunnytown. The name now seemed a horrible choice. Every single building and structure looked collapsed and decaying. The soft grass had been replaced with hard dirt and sticky mud. 
and what was left of the party decorations looked ancient and riddled with rot. Apple Bloom stood perfectly still. Everything around her was quiet. She slowly trotted forward, weaving her way through the dilapidated town and avoiding the mud patches. Apple Bloom peered into one of the collapsed homes as she passed it. Nothing but rubble. Then, a frightening voice growled out and shattered the silence. There was no other way. She would have infected the whole town. We couldn't have that. There was no other way. Apple Bloom looked all around, but no pony was there. Where had that voice come from? She continued forward, fear rising inside her. She rounded the bend deeper into town, when another noise reached her. It sounded like roots tearing. She turned in the direction it was coming from, realizing it was over by where she had met Three Leaf before. There was no other way! <laughs> she stopped dead as a grime-covered hoof erupted from the ground, pulling with it a macabre shamble of bones, sinew, and rot. The figure took the shape of a pony. Only it wasn't. It shambled forward with a lurching motion, stopping a few feet from the filly. The creature looked down toward Apple Bloom, staring at her with empty eye sockets. A red light began to rise in the monster's vacant skull as it opened its mouth. The curse mark will be found on this very night. The elders told us. They told us we would all have been in danger if they hadn't taken care of her. The creature spoke with an unnatural echo in its voice. Apple Bloom took a step closer, looking at its features. The thing still had a small amount of earthy green mane left. Th 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 three leaf? What remained of the zombie pony's jaw wobbled, forming a hellish sneer. That's right, darling. What happened here? What happened to you? Three leaf stood silent for what seemed like an eternity before answering. She had the mark. She had to go. The curse mark. We fell this very night. The elders told us. Told us we would have all been in danger if they hadn't taken care of her. You knew they killed an innocent mayor just because she earned her cutie mark? You knew? Apple Bloom yelled at the zombie pony, trying to seem brave. In truth, she was scared out of her wits. <laughs> Another voice broke the silence behind her. Please stay with us. Little one, we'll never let the same thing happen to you. Apple Bloom twirled to face this new voice. Another zombie pony was standing directly behind her. This one was taller than Three Leaf, and its skull was squarer. Time did not age this one well. There was nearly no flesh left on it at all. <coughs> Apple Bloom squealed, stepping back. How did this one sneak up so quietly? Her rump bumped into Three Leaf, making a sickening, squishing noise as rotting flesh oozed onto her back. Apple Bloom shivered in fear and disgust. She began to feel woozy, like something was draining all the energy right out of her. Her whole world began to spin around as more and more energy left her body. Through blurred vision, Apple Bloom watched the other zombie pony lean in close. It spoke in a gnarled voice, its eye holes flickering like red flames. Flames in a fireplace, still burning around the bones of a pony who died years ago. <coughs> Don't worry, you'll never become like her. I promise we'll protect you forever. The grey hoof zombie pony lunged forward, 
trying to snatch Apple Bloom between its forelegs. The sudden movement snapped Apple Bloom from her stupor. <coughs> she jumped away last minute, barely managing to slip through its grasp before bursting into a full gallop. She ran deeper into town, hoping to escape the pair. Both zombie ponies began to stumble after her, unable to match her speed. They opened their grisly mouths and let out sickening wails. <coughs> Bloom had managed to get to the town centre before hearing another gruesome moan. <coughs> After it faded, another zombie pony began to uproot itself near the town well. Its skull turned toward Apple Bloom the second it was free of its earthy prison. Let's be gone. The elder said so. They said no one's for the best. For the good of the town! For the good of the town! <coughs> Apple Bloom ran past it, ducking under a slow, sweeping strike as she passed. She stopped short at a massive wall of rocks that had been piled between her and the pathway out. It stretched the entire length of the town square and was far too high to climb over. The zombie pony were slowly walking toward her eyes alight with rage. She nervously paced back and forth. How was she going to get over this? A golden light circled one of the rocks in the wall, catching Apple Bloom's attention only for a moment before quickly vanishing. She ran over to the rock, trusting the phenomena and nudging it with a hoof. It was loose. Apple Bloom shoved her shoulder against the rock, pushing it with all the strength her little body could muster. The zombie pony was getting closer. We'll protect you forever. I Apple Bloom gave the stone one last shove, finally dislodging it. She knelt down and wiggled her way through the hole, just as the zombie pony fell in a clattering of bones where she had stood. She breathed heavily. Suddenly, being small was having its advantages. She barely had time to catch her breath as two more bony hooves erupted right next to her, clutching at her as she galloped away. She had made it. The edge of the town, back where she had first entered it. The large table that once held the food for the party had been overturned, its contents mouldy and decaying in the soil. The fields that had once been so full of life were now blighted and bare. Apple Bloom galloped forward, the gap into the Everfree Forest growing wider with each step. <coughs> Apple Bloom skidded to a halt. This new voice sounded like it was in pain. All we want is friendship. We'll protect you. Keep you safe from the crash marks. She turned to see a pair of zombie ponies standing where Ronio and Starlet once were. Something inside her wrenched in sorrow for the two. Their love had never had time to become anything. Their lives had been stolen by the Elder's murder as much as the blonde mare's. It wasn't fair. Both sets of their glowing eyes were set on the little filly. Maybe if she talked to them, maybe she could make it all better. Maybe they could escape with her, leave this terrible place and the magic that had ravished it. She took a step forward, stopping as another thought struck her brain. Or maybe this was all a trick. They both wobbled like they were sensing her thoughts. <laughs> Don't leave. The others won't like it. We can't let you leave. You can't ever leave. None of us can ever leave. Apple Bloom turned tail and made directly for the exit to the Everfree Forest. 
before she could reach her goal, one last zombie pony began to dredge itself out of the earth between her and the path. <laughs> Apple Bloom whinnied in protest. All this work just to be cut off again? She braced, preparing to charge through if need be. Something was different about this one, though. Its body wasn't nearly as decayed as the others. In fact, it was still mostly whole, save for a few rot marks and holes in her flesh. She even still had eyes. This zombie pony walked right up to Apple Bloom with little effort, choosing to focus her gaze on the two behind her instead. These fools. Even in death, they just don't understand. Her voice was clear, lacking the eerie echo the other zombies possessed. Apple Bloom looked this pony over. Her dirt-covered mane had a deep maroon sheen in the moonlight, and her decaying coat was patched with grey splotches. Her eyes still boiled with the same red light of the others, yet Apple Bloom thought she saw a tear fall from one. The zombie pony looked right at her, sighing deeply, and closed her eyes. I should have protected her, but I made my choice that day. I chose not to listen to her, not to follow her. I chose to let my fear overwhelm my friendship. This is our everlasting punishment for our sins. It's what we deserve. Apple Bloom reached a hoof out, patting Mita on the side of her foreleg. Oh, little one, why did you stay? I guess my curiosity just got the better of me. I never would have guessed this was what you were trying to protect me from. I'm so sorry. Don't be. The ponies of this town deserve every drop of this curse, and I'm no exception to that. I had the chance to stop her, to protect her, but I failed her as a friend. I abandoned her when she needed me most. Now I have my own sins to bear alongside those other monsters, cursed to relive my regrets of this night every year. But you, little one, you can escape our fate. You aren't bound here. If you leave before our replaying of this night is done, you still have hope. Another tear fell, and Mita opened her eyes again, giving Apple Bloom a weak smile. Apple Bloom almost wanted to give her a hug, despite her rotting form. Their peace was interrupted as the rest of the horde caught up. Their moans and wails were unbearable, forcing Apple Bloom to cover her ears. Mita pulled the little filly back to her hooves, looking her in the eyes with renewed vigor. They were eyes that had been hurt, eyes that suffered and endured centuries of pain. Now those eyes held a new feeling, though. One of righteous fury. Mita stared at Apple Bloom and spoke very clearly. I'm done hiding. And I'm done being the scared little pony that cowers away from her problems behind a closed door. You've taught me tonight that I need to be strong, and I need to protect the ones I care about. She stepped to Apple Bloom's side, nudging her toward the town exit. Run, little one. Run as fast as you can. Keep running and do not stop until you reach the outside world beyond the poison joke boundary. With that final command, Mita charged into the mob of zombie ponies, a stream of tears falling from her eyes. With one mighty headbutt, she sent the forefront of the group scattering like bowling pins. Oh, Mita! Why? Why? The rest of the herd became disorganized and frantic at the sudden attack confused that one of their own would so brazenly defy them. Show the us all. You've doomed us all. Why? Apple Bloom ran for the tree line as the mob enveloped Mita, glancing back to her savior before passing through. The curse will get us all. Zombie ponies gnawed and bit at her, but Mita would not yield. 
As more and more zombies dogpiled the poor pony, Mita managed to pull her head out from the crowd one last time. What are you waiting for? Run for your life! Apple Bloom nodded and galloped off into the forest, suppressing her own sadness for the sacrifice Mita had given her. She wished she could have brought the other pony with her, wished she didn't have to leave her to that fate. The Everfree Forest was alive with movement. Wails and moans of zombie ponies echoed through the trees. Every bush was her enemy, every turn yielding nothing but more skeletons. The forest grew darker with every minute, the moonlight extinguished by the thick canopy once more. Applebloom counted her blessings that zombie ponies' eyes glowed, where she would never have seen them coming in this darkness. In the distance, Applebloom could see a patch of moonlight ahead of her. She was almost to the poison joke field. <laughs> Abruptly, a slimy sensation wrapped itself around one of her hind legs. She screamed in horror. A zombie had managed to latch itself onto her. The familiar draining sensation began to pour over her again as the zombie opened its mouth. We have protected you forever. The zombie did not get a chance to finish as Apple Bloom brought her free back hoof into its skull. The adrenaline from her scare had nearly doubled her strength and her little hoof cracked the bones of the zombie's face. The creature released its grip and her energy came surging back. Apple Bloom charged headlong into the thicket, heart still pounding from her encounter. She spun around, looking for her next path. There was none. Nothing. Every part of the woods had closed in around her, leaving only the scattering of moonlight and the moaning of her pursuers. She slumped to the ground, heart sinking in her chest. So this was it. After all that, all she could do now was wait for her demise. I just want to go home! She screamed into the darkness. Apple Bloom's sobbing slowed just enough to hear it. Or rather, not hear it. All of the moans and growls that were pursuing her had suddenly ceased, leaving nothing but quiet. She looked up, raising a brow in confusion. What happened to all the zombies? As she wondered this, a new sound broke the silence. A sound like that of clopping hooves. Apple Bloom leapt back as a golden glow erupted underneath her. In the dirt sat a pair of hoof prints bathed in golden light. As the clopping sound continued, the prints began to move as well, etching a path directly into the brush in front of her. Apple Bloom blinked, confounded by this turn of events. She started following the hoof prints, pushing herself through the brush and trees as the trail bent and swayed beneath them. Then, finally, it stopped. Apple Bloom wasn't sure where she was. She had gone so deep in the woods, the darkness made it almost impossible to see. Before Apple Bloom could take another step, a golden light pierced through the darkness. Apple Bloom covered her eyes at first, lowering her hoof to behold a familiar mare standing before her. She was grey, with a blonde mane streaked with gold. Her eyes gleamed with a golden light. The ghostly pony hovered there in front of her, smiling. Hi! Um, hello? Apple Bloom hesitated. The ghost pony's happiness softened into a glum look. I'm sorry I dragged you into all this. Oh, don't be sad. I don't blame you. I was just as curious as... as you used to be. So this is partly my fault, too. The ghost pony smiled again. My name is Ruby. What's yours? Apple Bloom. That's a nice name. So glad to have met you, Apple Bloom. A low moaning sound was growing in the distance. Ruby turned in midair, looking off into the woods. Your cutie mark is a magnifying glass? Apple Bloom asked as Ruby's flanks came into view. Ruby turned back to her with glee. 
Yes! It turns out I'm really good at finding things. And I finally understand what that means, too. I'm so sorry for what happened. Those town's ponies did such a terrible thing to you. Don't be sorry, Apple Bloom. If anything, pity them. Ruby floated effortlessly through the air, leaving a fading trail of golden sparkles behind her. She twirled upside down, directly above Apple Bloom, never breaking her smile. They knew what they were doing was wrong, and they paid the price for their actions. But they murdered you! How can you forgive them so easily? Apple Bloom found Ruby's cheerful demeanor almost contagious, but she still felt anger for what fate had befallen her. Ruby sighed and twirled around again, dropping to the forest floor next to Apple Bloom. She placed a hoof on Apple Bloom's shoulder. Surprisingly, it felt very warm and comforting to the little filly. It does no good to dwell on the mistakes of others, Apple Bloom. The ponies of Sunny Town were acting out of fear and felt no real remorse for what they did. The curse put on them by the Everfree Forest can be broken, but only through atonement. So then, why don't you just make them feel sorry for what they did? Making some pony feel sorry for their mistakes isn't the same. Unless they can find reason to be sorry for themselves, then their restitution is meaningless. They have to repent of their own free will to break their curse. And because of meeting you, my best friend is one step closer to breaking her curse now. Thank you for that. The moaning turned to a rustling of leaves and clopping of hooves as four zombies came into view at the edge of the forest. They didn't seem to notice Ruby or Apple Bloom yet. Ruby knelt down close to Apple Bloom, bathing her in the light from her golden glowing eyes. Her smile was intoxicating. It made Apple Bloom unafraid. Don't worry. I'm going to find you a way out of this. I promise. With those last words, Ruby's form began to fade away, leaving Apple Bloom alone in the darkness. The zombie ponies had all turned toward her and were shambling closer and closer. Apple Bloom stood her ground, closing her eyes and waiting. All four zombie ponies were now directly over her. Their rotting stench nearly made Apple Bloom gag. The group all leaned down, preparing for a coup de grace. Twilight Sparkle sputtered and moaned as she pushed her way through the underbrush. The forest had gone completely dark since night fell, and she could only see as far as the light on her horn would allow her. Uh, Apple Bloom, I give the little filly one very simple instruction. Stay put and don't wander off. Then what does she do? Exactly the opposite! I mean, how hard is it to sit still for ten minutes? Yelp! She yelped as a particularly nasty sticker bush stuck to her leg. Twilight's horn glowed pale purple as her magic carefully plucked the bush's prickles from her coat. I swear, when I find that little pony, she's going to wish she was still lost in the woods! Twilight cursed loudly to the forest. A loud growling noise caused the purple unicorn to shrink back. Oh, I hope she's okay. Twilight pressed on, her fear for Apple Bloom's safety growing more and more. She tried calling out to the little filly. Apple Bloom? Where are you? Oh, I should have never brought her. Applejack will never forgive me if anything happens to her. Wait, what's that? A small golden sphere bobbed back and forth between the trees in front of the unicorn. She rubbed her eyes to make sure she wasn't seeing things. Twilight took a step closer, and the orb bobbed back deeper away from her. Twilight heard a faint voice coming from the direction of the light. I just want to go home! Twilight recognized the voice immediately. It was Apple Bloom, and she sounded like she was scared and hurt. The purple unicorn reared up and charged forward in panic. The bobbing golden light kept pace with Twilight as she threw herself through bushes and brambles. 
She ran through the pain. The sounds of Apple Bloom's sobs her only focus. Apple Bloom, where are you? The orb that guided her suddenly vanished, leaving Twilight stranded in the dark. The unicorn stamped a hoof in frustration. She couldn't even hear Apple Bloom anymore either. No, I won't lose her. Twilight called out to the darkness as she braced herself. Sparks began to fly from her horn as she conjured a large ball of white light. The magic grew bigger and brighter, lighting up the whole area. With a jerk of her head, Twilight sent the orb flying off into the distance in front of her. It happened all so fast. Apple Bloom had been standing there, completely defiant against her zombified attackers. They had all lunged at her in unison, but none of them managed to even touch her. Something loud, round, and bright had exploded over top her and the surrounding forest, illuminating the whole area as if the sun itself was shining overhead. All around Apple Bloom lay the crumbled bones of defeated zombie ponies, their remains slowly melting back into the earth from whence they came. All Apple Bloom could hear was the call of a familiar voice. Apple Bloom! Apple Bloom, where are you? Twilight! She hopped in delight. She knew that voice. Twilight Sparkle pushed her way through one of the bushes. She looked a total wreck. Her breathing was laboured, and her whole coat was covered in mud and briars. Twilight spotted Apple Bloom by her large bow almost immediately, calling out to her again. Apple Bloom! Oh, Apple Bloom, there you are! Thanks, Celestia, I found you! Twilight! Apple Bloom squeaked, embracing her saviour with both forehooves. Twilight staggered under the sudden hug, but quickly righted herself with a smile. What in the name of Equestria are you doing way out here in the woods? Didn't I tell you to stay put? I oh, know, Twilight. I'm sorry I wandered off. Okay, okay. Let's just get out of this creepy place. Who knows what kind of stuff is lurking in these woods? Twilight murmured, quickly leading Apple Bloom back to the path she had taken. Twilight breathed a sigh of relief as the pair made their way back. Apple Bloom remained silent for the rest of the trip out. She thought about telling Twilight all about her adventure, but decided that it might be best to save it for later. It only took the pony pair a minute to reach the end of the Everfree Forest. The Ponyville countryside was covered in moonlight now, the sun fully set. Apple Bloom and Twilight trotted merrily away from the forest, heading in the direction of town. Apple Bloom paused as Twilight pressed on. She felt like something was calling out to her. She turned back to look at the Everfree Forest, catching just the faintest glimmer of gold among the tree trunks. Ruby's ghost was floating just under the canopy, wearing a smile on her face. She waved at Apple Bloom, and Apple Bloom happily waved back. Just as the two finished their goodbye, a second glow began to rise next to Ruby. This one had a faintly red aura about it, and her eyes glowed with a soft maroon sheen. Mita's ghost tapped her friend on the shoulder, smiling weakly as Ruby spun around to face her. Ruby's ghost leapt and twirled with excitement, latching onto Mita in loving embrace. Apple Bloom felt a tear drop from her eye as she watched the pair of best friends reunite, a feeling of utter joy filling her heart. Ruby and Mita both faced Apple Bloom and waved again, gleefully drifting back into the Everfree Forest. Before the two lights from the ghostly ponies faded, Apple Bloom could clearly hear both their voices calling out to her. See you later. See you later, friend. friend. Apple Bloom smiled, turned, and made for home.